Hello, and welcome to Lockout Tagout. On behalf of Michigan Sugar and Express Employment Professionals, we thank you for taking time and participating in this video. We will cover Lockout Tagout supplies location, Lockout Tagout definitions, scope of Lockout Tagout, OSHA and Michigan OSHA, and Lockout Tagout procedures. This safety and orientation video is a very important part in participating in the beet harvest. These videos will need your full attention, and if you are not paying attention, sleeping, or talking during this video, you will be asked to leave and you will not be eligible to work. The purpose of this training education is to provide you with the tools and knowledge of Michigan Sugar Company's procedures, policies, and commitment to lockout tagout. Failure to follow lockout tagout may not only prove to be harmful or fatal, but can result in reprimand or discharge. Following lockout tagout procedures and policies is the responsibility of every employee. Lockout tagout is the single most important activity that you ever do as an employee to protect yourself, coworkers, and your family. Locks and tags for lockout tagout are not issued to individual employees, except beat receiving leaders, maintenance, and supervision. The locks and tags are located at each piler and stored in a designated safety lockout tagout supply box. Each piler will have four sets of locks. In the occurrence of a lockout tagout event, employees will each obtain a lock from this box and follow lockout tagout procedures. Upon completion of a lockout tagout event, employees place their lock with its key back in the safety lockout tagout supply box. Locks and keys are not to be kept on hand by employees when not in use. Lockout tagout definitions. A lockout tagout is a procedure of steps required to properly de-energize and prevent re-energization of a machine by locking out its energy source so that the maintenance or servicing can be performed to the machine safely. Energy source is the source that provides energy to the machine. That source being of any of the following, electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal, or any other form of energy. Stored energy is potential stored or residual energy existing following lockout that needs to be expelled prior to performing service and or maintenance. Energy isolating device, the device that provides or prevents the energy source being supplied to a machine. Example, disconnects at Piler's electrical panel or cord power supply boxes. Lockout device, a device that uses a lock to hold an EID in a safe position. Lockout, the placement of a lockout device on an EID in accordance with an established procedure, which ensures that EID and machine being controlled cannot operate. Tagout, the placement of a tagout device on the EID in accordance with an established procedure, used to indicate that the energy isolation device, also known as EID, and equipment being controlled may not be operated until the tagout device is removed. Tagout device. A prominent warning device, such as a tag, and a means of attachment, which can be securely fastened to an EID in accordance with an established procedure, indicating that an EID and the equipment being controlled may not be operated until the tagout device is removed. Normal production operation, the utilization of a machine to perform its intended production function. Servicing or maintenance. Activities such as construction, installing, setting up, adjusting, inspecting, modifying, cleaning, lubricating, or overhauling machines. Affected employee is one whose job requires him or her to operate or use a machine on which servicing and or maintenance is being performed under lockout tagout. It is also one whose job requires him or her to work in an area in which servicing and or maintenance is being performed. Authorized employee is one who implements a lockout procedure on machines or equipment to perform the servicing and or maintenance on that machine. Here are some photo examples. Some photo examples continued of the piler main disconnect, also again known as the EID, and the piler lockout tagout sign. Scope of lockout tagout. The standard Michigan OSHA and OSHA covers the servicing and or maintenance of machines and equipment in which the unexpected energization or startup of the machines or equipment or the release of stored energy could cause injury to employees. This standard applies to the control of the energy during servicing and or maintenance of machines and equipment. 
This covers if an employee is required to place any part of his or her body into an area on a machine or piece of equipment where work is performed upon the material being processed, which is a point of operation, or where an associated danger zone exists during a machine operating cycle. Procedure. The following procedures apply to all servicing and or maintenance of machines or equipment. Minor tool changes and adjustments or other minor servicing activities which take place during normal production operations do not require these procedures if they are routine, repetitive, and integral to the use of the machine equipment for production. Provided that the work is performed using alternate measures which provide effective protection such as guards, e-stops, and safety blocks are a few examples of effective alternative measures. Under no circumstances is an employee ever permitted to place any part of his or her body within a hazardous area, such as the point of operation or ingoing nip point area, while the equipment is running or energized, unless the employee is engaged in certain minor servicing performed during normal production operations and alternative measures which provide effective protection have been taken. Lackout devices will be affixed to the EID by each authorized employee to hold the devices in a safe or off position. No one will attempt to restart or re-energize machines that have been locked out until the locks have been removed and the machine has been released to the operator. Place the machine's main disconnect, EID, into the downward off position. Each authorized employee collects their own lock and key from the machine's safety lockout tagout supply box. All authorized employees take turns placing their locks on the EID appropriately to prevent re-engagement of EID. Make sure your lock is secured properly. Each authorized employee is the only one responsible for his or her own key. Before work is performed, authorized employees must confirm the machine has been de-energized and no stored or residual energy remains. Services and or maintenance may now be performed. Once service is done, Confirm work is complete. All tools, personnel accounted for, and all employees are aware that the machine will be re-energized. Authorized employees begin to remove their locks from the EID. Authorized employees place their locks and keys back in the safety lockout tagout supply box. Once everyone is clear and all locks are removed from the EID, the machine may have its disconnect EID placed back into the on position. Always yell, all clear, prior to placing disconnects into the on position. Present employee waits for relief employee to arrive, then explains the situation to them. Present employee shows the relief employee their locks placement. Present employee gives the locks key to the relief employee. Relief employee then confirms the key and lock are a pair by unlocking and relocking the device. The present employee is now free to continue with new instructions. Employee contacts and updates their beat receiving leader or supervisor on the progress of service and maintenance of the machine. 
The beat receiving leader or supervisor places their lock on the EID and locks out the machine. The BRL or supervisor now assumes control of the machine. Employee may now remove their lock and place it back in the lockout tagout supply box it came from. Employee is now free to continue with new directions. Steps for placing EIDs in the on-off positions. Stand to the side of the disconnect box. You do not want your body in front of the disconnect box. With your body facing the piler, place your innermost hand on the EID switch. Turn your head away so that you're looking away from the EID. This way you're not looking towards it in case of an arc flash. Take a deep breath and hold it in. In case of an arc flash, this will prevent any inhalation of any airborne materials. Now you may move the switch into the desired on or off position. Emergency lock removal. Upon the occurrence that an authorized person who applied a lockout device is no longer on site or available, that device may be removed by Michigan Sugar Company provided the following conditions. It is verified that the authorized employee who applied the device is not at the facility. All efforts are made to contact the authorized employee to inform him or her of the removal. The authorized employee is notified by the functional supervisor of the removal before resuming work at the facility. During any shift or personnel change, the continuity of the lockout tackout procedure will be maintained. When startup of the machine or equipment is anticipated on the change shift or by changed personnel, an orderly transfer of lockout devices will occur. All lockouts will be verified by the new authorized person before work on the machine or equipment is started. Training The employer shall provide training to ensure that the purpose and function of the energy control program are understood by employees and that the knowledge and skills required for the safe application, usage, and removal of the energy controls are acquired by employees. The training shall include the following. Recognition of applicable hazardous energy sources, the type and magnitude of the energy available in the workplace, and the methods and means necessary for energy isolation and control. Each affected employee shall be instructed in the purpose and use of the energy control procedure. All other employees whose work operations are or may be in an area where energy control procedures may be utilized shall be instructed about the procedure and about the prohibition relating to attempts to restart or re-energize machines or equipment which are locked out or tagged out. Tag out systems. When tag out systems are used, employees shall also be trained in the following limitations of tags. Tags are essentially warning devices affixed to the EIDs and do not provide the physical restraint on those devices that is provided by a lock. When a tag is attached to an EID, it is not to be removed without authorization of the authorized person responsible for it, and it is never to be bypassed, ignored, or otherwise defeated. Tags must be legible and understandable by all authorized employees, affected employees, and all other employees whose work operations are or may be in the area. Tags and their means of attachment must be made of materials which will withstand the environmental conditions encountered in the workplace. Tags may evoke a false sense of security and their meaning needs to be understood as a part of the overall energy control program. Tags must be securely attached to an EID so that they cannot be inadvertently or accidentally detached. Periodic inspection. The employer shall certify that periodic and yearly inspections are performed on machinery, equipment, energy control procedures, and the way it is being utilized. Think before you act. Consequences of choosing not to put safety first. The following pictures are real and showcase results from not choosing to follow lockout tagout procedures in the workplace. Warning, these are graphic. Picture with pliers in hand, 110 volts, other 240 volts. What can happen in two seconds? Both employees cleaning equipment for two seconds. 
changing a drill bit without following lockout tagout procedure. We appreciate you all for taking the time to watch and listen to this video. Your safety is our number one priority. We want to wish you all a safe, successful, and happy harvest. Thank you.